<laughs> well, good morning. Uh, we're here for Marion County uh, Board of Commissioners weekly board meeting. We're in the Senate hearing room at 555 Court Street. It is Wednesday, August 8, 2018. And as always, if you will join us to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. By the way, it's the senator here. Yes, that was the... The senator hearing room, not the Senate hearing yes. room. Yeah, you know what? Um, right. My friends down in the gold building would probably appreciate the Senate hearing room. It's the old Senator Hotel is actually yes. why we call this, because that, that's what was here before this building was built. So we're first thing on the agenda today is public comment. We have one individual signed up, David Bean. And David, welcome. It's good to see you today. County Commissioners, I want to approve for mental health services for Saturday and Sunday because a lot of them don't have anywhere to go in the emergency. So I'm asking that the county get a drop-in center for the Marion County for disability people in Marion County. A lot of them can't go in the emergency. So some of them have to walk because they ain't getting no bus system for the hospital. A lot of them have to walk. So I'm thinking if we have to work on, on the mental health issues on that, policy on that, because we need to have a backup system there for them, for all the disability people in Marion County. David, thank you. Um, I know the, uh, the crisis center is open 24-7, and I think the issue you brought up about transportation, I know with the, uh, the legislature last year passed uh, a new payroll tax that I believe we're all paying now, out of our our payroll which will help start January 1st John so it'll be January 1st and uh, I have even though we have no uh, jurisdiction over the uh, Salem Kaiser transportation district which meets in this room I believe what they're going to do with some of that extra money is they're planning on adding Saturday service or at least attempting to but add I, I was asking the county commissioners would have a system there because a lot of them can't read and write don't know where the hospitals are I don't know where all the services are because a lot of them can't read or write. Yeah. So I like the county commissioners look at that policy okay. on that. Good. Well, the we'll do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Well, I'm trying to remember, and it shows I don't always pay attention. We had a meeting with Health Department uh, Management Update Monday, and uh, weren't we talking about how the county takes over and runs and provides that services for weekend and off hours? Right. So at, at, Salem, at Salem Health. Yeah. Right. So we have some service there. It's just a matter of communicating that. Yeah, that's what I'm right. thinking okay. with, if we can look at that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good to see you always. Thank you. Well, before we, before we get in the consent calendar, I, I wanted to um, uh, share with you, maybe because I, I can't get through this whole board session without doing this because uh, it's going to get warm in here. But I yesterday I was wondering uh, where you were. Oh, dear. Because I... <laughs> I was out um, weed eating with the juvenile crew, and I wanted you to see what I have that maybe you don't have. Well, it looks pretty fresh. I don't see a lot of markings. <laughs> <laughs> I should have brought my shoes out of the car that are just a mess from weed eating yesterday. But it says public he works. came in the office I yesterday, and I wore this all was, afternoon. He was dirty and sweaty and and sunburned and. What not? Yeah, and I was about ready to collapse, and then I, I, told I drank him to take a shower. I drank two of two of these with water and had some nuts, and I finally got a little energy, and I worked till about four o'clock, and then I went and took a shower, and then did neighborhood night out last well, it night. Does open up new employment opportunities? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some of us thought you should have taken a shower earlier. Yeah. I, I, also, on a serious note, I did go out with our juvenile crew yesterday, uh, two different work crews, and those young men were. Um, they were all men at, at this yesterday, and they did a great job of cleaning, uh, doing skirts and uh, doing uh, the weed eating out there. Blackberry bushes, oh my gosh, Not Brian. An easy day yesterday, by any means. No, and uh, and then then cleaning up uh, 
what was left over of a homeless camp over in one of our stormwater ditches that uh, I got some pictures of. So, okay, I guess we better do some business. Your turn. All right, Chair Cameron, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve our consent calendar this morning. And then it includes, and from Public Works, we received notice of a hearings officer's decision that approves uh, conditional use case 18017 Green Park Solar LLC on property owned by Joanne and Larry Ross, clerk's, clerk's file 5752. We received notice of a hearings officer decision denying a conditional use case 18025 Jennifer E. Hofling, trustee of the Jennifer E. Hofling Revocable Living Trust dated April 18, 2018. Tax Office approve an order canceling uncollectible personal property tax ac accounts in the amount of $27,451.16. Approve a property tax refund in the amount of $51,788.64 to Panasonic Eco Solutions Solar America LLC tax ID R29389. And another approved property tax refund in the amount of $209,320 to Panasonic Eco Solutions America Tax ID 349671. And I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Just a comment. We continue to have uh, solar parks. I don't know what the correct name is approved, still based on the old rules, and we'll be settling out the thoughts, rules for the future soon. Yeah, so those are applications that came in prior to our action right. that we took a couple, two or three months ago. Okay. Um, seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of approving the consent calendar signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Our first action item today is to consider approval of, of an order directing county council to file a motion to intervene on behalf of Marion County residents into a lawsuit entitled Northwest Environmental Defense Center uh, at all with U.S. Army Corps versus U.S. Army Corps engineers at all. And legal counsel Jane uh, Veto is going to uh, share a little bit about this lawsuit. Um, Chair Cameron, just a little bit of background. Um, in March of this year, the Northwest Environmental Defense uh, Center filed a lawsuit in federal court against the U.S. Uh, Army Corps of Engineers, and they're seeking certain actions against 13 um, dams on the Willamette River. Um, but in particular, the one that concerns Marion County is that the plaintiffs in that lawsuit are um, asking the court to order um, the Army Corps to install a temperature control device in Detroit Dam. The city of Salem has water rights in the North City of the North San Diego River, and in June the city moved to intervene in that lawsuit or to join that lawsuit. And they said that if this water temperature control device is installed, it's going to lower the water level and it's going to impact the quality of the water. So it's going to affect both quantity and the quality of the water, and that's going to negatively impact this, the residents of Salem. Because Marion County shares similar interests in both quantity and quality of, of water in North San Diego, and also because the county has an economic interest through recreation in North San Diego, um, which would be impacted, negatively impacted, if Detroit Lake were drained for an extensive period of time and if the water level was low, the board directed me to prepare the proposed order that I'm bringing you today. And that order would direct my office to file a motion to intervene in this lawsuit. I note that the county has been working through the NEPA process and been working. Um, but the concern now is because this lawsuit was filed, that a resolution for Detroit Dam is going to be reached to the parties. If we don't join this lawsuit, we won't have a seat at the table. We won't be part of that resolution. Our voice won't be heard. So today I did bring to you a draft order. And your options are to direct my office to join this lawsuit to file a motion to intervene or to not. So that is for your consideration today. I just want to make one more comment about the uh, financial or the economic interest, uh, probably even more so is the agricultural industry and the water that they depend on for irrigation. Marion County is the number one ag producing 
uh, farm gate ag producing county in the state of Oregon, and uh, we need to help protect that uh, industry and, and uh, those people as well. So I, I think that'll be a part of, of this. Commissioner? Well, I've got lots, and it's timely. Um, I attended a meeting in Staten last night from Corps of Engineers to talk about their latest, what they're finding. Thank as you for doing an that. Analyzed different thoughts that have come up through the public comment process. Now, we've gotten letters that this kind of sets the trend, uh, individual back to us, although I think we sent a joint letter to them. But anyway, basically saying that we've seen your concerns and don't be. Well, <laughs> I'm not buying it. So I attended the meeting and it started with, I really, I really thought that they would say, well, here, you know, we've really looked into this now and we're settling on something that's that's more but it wasn't that at all it was right from the beginning yeah we've heard your comments but we still believe our plan is the best and that's where we're going and the next is the environmental impact statement and you'll get a chance to comment on it but things are rolling by then and and going um, then they wanted to send everybody back that individual stations for fish uh, water flow etc um, and not it was it was it was not to tell about new methods it's just to start convincing people that yes we've looked at it and this is the best thing it was a it was a well the dog and pony the cell show and they didn't weren't even really going to have a public um, questions your questions would be answered at the stations and somebody started talking and then I'm not real proud of it but I got a little bit hot I can't say it any different and they said, well, can, can I at least make a statement? And the gist of the statement was that you're, you're not listening. You say you are, but you're not. Um, you're threatening to destroy Marion County cities and, and farms, and, and we're not just going to lay there. So you better put into your calculations the delay in time and cost of every injunction. See, I'm getting, as I say it, you get an idea. Every injunction we can think of. And... Uh, and they kind of looked at me like, what's your problem? I just, I'm sorry. But uh, I said it and I mean it. And this is, this is the first of it. This may not be the one that stops them, but everything we can do to make it look. I will say, and you, you know the project manager's oh, yeah. name. What is it? Jeff. Jeff. He's a good guy. Uh, hate to be ripping on him. Yeah, he's the engineering guy that's But he's in driving. charge of the project, so he wants the project to happen. Probably Tim was there, the guy that operates the dams. He didn't talk. Small guy, was. or I mean, younger guy. But anyway, guy. Jeff came to me afterwards and and confided that what we've looked at so much different that maybe you didn't hear in our presentation is they're they're uh, thinking that uh, they they will do the wet build in the water build, and as far as I'm concerned, they better. That's the one that doesn't affect us. If it costs more and takes longer, I'm sorry, but if you insist on doing this. Uh, and he says that they've got it where they will guarantee 750 feet, which is supposed to be enough for Salem and the water districts and everything that Staten that draws out at Staten. So he said, that's our plan. I said, well, if you can do that, then, then I feel different. But believe me. They haven't that, said that. They haven't yeah, said that if publicly If that isn't yet. your final conclusion. Right. Um, and then our senators have to get involved here. They're laying back. And I'm just going to say it out loud, too, because I'm thinking of it. They're laying back because apparently the environmental community thinks this is what it is, but they need to be involved. They can't, this would be a travesty if it went on without uh, focusing in on the one that doesn't, well, doesn't kill Marion County. Well, well I, I think the, uh, it goes back to being in the, in the lawsuit, so there is standing. I think the Northwest Environmental Defense Center would rather see it be done in the wet too because the, then it's going to be better water for the fish during those years, right? I mean, yes. because if they take it down to 1350. I don't see anything lives in that river in, the, in no, between. No, so it would be better all overall, but it would be co very costly. I, in fact, I've heard that they don't even know if this has ever been done, because you're talking 300 feet versus, you know, a bridge you're building at 150 feet. But, but it isn't feet really. It's just that at the low level, you get what work you can base, and then once they're above it, yeah. that would be a pretty good window to be working. Uh, Jane, is there, I read the, um, the order, um, and it doesn't say anything about the agricultural community and economic. Is there a way we can... Uh, Put something in there about that we can definitely put that in our so, motion to intervene put that motion put that in our motion yes. to mention yes. uh 
you know, maybe about us being the number one ag producing uh, county and uh, water is critically important for that economic um, engine or something. You, you're good at that. Yeah. So when you make the motion, can you? I will. Just one other comment, and that's private conversation with Jeff. Uh, well, maybe that was private, but they just didn't expect it to be a problem when they first oh, I know. came forward with it. And, and, and he did comment like he thinks, well, if you can't plant corn one year, well, you plant something else, no big deal. And, but he does say, now I recognize, you know, the, for example, grapes or trees or uh, any perennial Blue plants. Berries. Oh, don't you mess with the blueberries. But uh, we're at least opening their eyes, but now we've got to force them to make the right call. Yeah, it's really good timing. Thank you for going. I was at Neighborhood Night Out four different places last night, and I think it was great that you were there because so they, they see me up there a lot, and, and you were there, and they know we're united on this as a board. But I see Danielle sitting out in, in the audience, and lots of things are happening along with this. The study of water that we've been doing, the value of water, uh, so there's there's this is really good timing to kind of alert everybody. But yeah, that first state meeting that Congressman Trader did, and you and I were at it. I I remember them saying they said we didn't even think about the downstream impact on this. No, this stuff. is our water. This is our dam. This is how we take care of our problem. Yeah. Well, it's good that we're so we're there chair cameron i'd like to make a motion that we do approve an order directing county council to file a motion to intervene on behalf of marion county residents in the lawsuit entitled northwest environmental defense center at all versus u.s army corps of engineers and add some language that describes our agriculture situation in marion county okay and i'll second the motion <clears throat> any further discussion seeing none all those in favor signify by saying aye 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 all right, let's see where that goes. Thanks, Jane. Next on our uh, list under community services, consider an approve consider approval of a contract for services with Shelter Buddy in the amount of one hundred and three thousand one hundred and sixty three dollars for implementation support and maintenance for an animal management software system that we have been waiting for for a while. Yes, it's quite a mouthful. And. Tamara, I need to do a ride along with the dog people, with the animal control people. You think you get a new vest for that? I, yeah, I think I'll, I'll get the bite suit out from the sheriff's department. That well, I wear. hopefully you won't need that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, good morning, commissioners. Tamara Getch, direct for community services. I'm joined this morning um, by our staff and uh, co-director uh, Danielle Gonzalez, Marion County mm -hmm. uh, Community Services Department, and Scott Emery from Information Technology. So as you indicated um, at the opening, we are here today to um, introduce a contract for a new animal management software system. But I also wanted to take this opportunity to uh, use it as a venue to help the public understand what the dog shelter does and how this service will be uh, a service to them as well as uh, to us in operations. So under County Code uh, Chapter 6.05, Marion County Commissioners have authorized uh, the shelter to be uh, the oversight and control of both the uh, dog control county codes as well as the operations of the facility. And as part of the operations of the uh, shelter facility, we are, in, we are charged with doing licensing, uh, providing care and feeding of all stray and lost dogs that come into our care. And then those that end up being uh, becoming the property of Marion County due to unredeemed animals that come into our care. We then provide um, alternative services and supports to the community through adoption. We have a huge fostering program that we utilize that helps um, provide services uh, to the dogs in our care um, and get them out of a shelter environment. And then we also work with local rescues. Uh, the goal of this contract um, was really started in uh, October of 2015. I received a call from uh, uh, information technology staff member at the time uh, letting me know that our existing information anim or integrated animal management software system, which is called uh, IMS, is what we call it in-house, IMS was uh, experiencing 
many failures. We were spending a lot of effort, a lot of time and energy on fixing things that were not working both um, at the shelter and then we were also experiencing some uh, constraints because of the type of framework that was uh, being utilized in uh, with this particular software platform. So we began looking at that in 2015. Um, we uh, shortly thereafter began to uh, put together a, a capital improvement project um, proposal to the county. For the last couple of years, this has been in our budget uh, to get implemented. The difficulty is, is when you go from an in-house build to an off-the-shelf off the shelf uh, build, it becomes a more difficult. You need to really map out all of the new systems that we may need to have as the project is developed and looking at how we can use this off the shelf build that we won't have to do all the in house fixes, um, but we really be using uh, software packages that exist, have been used in other counties or other areas. Uh, throughout the state or otherwise, and figure out how we can then support services that our public requires, demands of, uh, from us to provide care and services to them. So the, we're, our hope with this new software system is to not only improve our efficiencies with, the con with this new off-the-shelf system, which is Shelter Buddy, uh, so we're hoping the shelter buddy will then give us some efficiencies that we don't currently have in-house with the operations of IMES. We are doing a, a lot of um, alternative practices, I'll say, uh, of tracking information because IMES does not have the capacity to do some of the things that we are needing um, and be responsive to the public. Uh, we do a lot of spreadsheets. We do a lot of hand counts. Our picking and pulling information. Uh, that system alters some of the procedures that we do in the caring of our animals. And so with this new software, we're going to, of course, we'll, we'll need to do some changes to fit our flow to align with the new system. However, we won't have to direct uh, our IT staff to do all of those in-house fixes um, I think there was a routine call uh, to IT that was a demand of their time. We know that their time is precious, uh, and we have a lot of other things that we could be utilizing uh, those talents toward for county business, and this will help us in uh, securing supports for that. I think the big piece for the public is that as we increase our um, access to dog licensing, which is an important piece of our work, that if we were to, uh, to ensure that everybody who is a dog owner had a license, that would tell the public that we have a huge uh, rabies vaccination, um, I guess uh, most, dogs in animal, uh, most dogs in Marion County would be licensed um, and would have the rabies vaccination. And then it also helps us in returning dogs back to the community more successfully. Uh, if a dog has a license, they have a longer length of stay at the shelter per our code. Um, any unredeemed dog that is unlicensed becomes county property uh, and goes into our adoption lane after three days. If it's licensed, it's, there's a longer stay. So those are all the important pieces, rabies, length of stay, reuni reunification to the public. In the past, we haven't been able to do online licensing. This new system is gonna allow us to help uh, the public get a license more quickly uh, through the internet. That's our normal way of doing business these days, rather than having that face-to-face -face in, inside the shelter, writing a check is becoming less common for people. And so we're really looking for ways to gain efficiencies, uh, improve access, and then make sure that when we have a product um, that it comes out of the shelter buddy, that it's really serving not only our production needs, but also being able to tell the story of the types of services that we have and increasing our transparency to the public. So all of that is to say we're really excited. It's been a long journey. 
Um, but I just really want to compliment uh, Danielle and Scott's staff um, for helping us get here today. That without their dedication to the, the details of the contract, um, being committed to making sure that we get to an outcome, we wouldn't be here. We would still be in the process mode. Um, so I really appreciate that. Um, Danielle, you've been working intimately about uh, on this contract. Can you talk a little bit about that and what the flow may look like, et cetera? Yeah. So uh, with this particular contract, we've taken an opportunity to actually look at the process and operations workflows internally and externally. Um, when we first went out for RFP, we actually very specifically put that we are looking for operational efficiencies for the staff, the internal staff, as well as for our customers. Microphone. Thank you. Is that better? Yep, there you okay, go. Okay, thank you. Um, so we were looking for those, in, those uh, efficiencies that we could have internally, um, as well as for the constituents that are trying or attempting to comply with state and local laws uh, to uh, license their dog. So licensing took a very uh, front and center approach on this particular animal management uh, software RFP that we went through. Um, with that, we ended up with a, a company that's actually out of Australia, but they are a, um, a kind of a, like a Willamette Humane Society type um, organization. So they are intimately involved in the operation side. Um, they have a, a licensing feature as well, and they have a nice intuitive um, interface. And so we, we selected Shelter Buddy as their uh, doing business as Shelter Buddy Inc. Um, and so they put together a very nice plan. They've, we've got some operation, um, excuse me, some pieces of the project management already in place. Um, Scott's team has been wonderful because they've been working with us to work on data migration. They've already worked with us on helping to create our workflows of what we have currently and what we can do in the future to improve those workflows. Um, really, the big hope for us is, is to get better reports. Right now, we have rudimentary reports that we're able to pull. So there's no, you can only take like one variable at a time. And if you're a nerd like me, you kind of like multiple variables. Um, and so so it, it makes it harder to make decisions um, because you're only getting a, a small portion of the picture. Um, as Tamara said, the workarounds that the uh, current staff are doing, yeah, it's multiple and it's multiple pieces of work, um, extra pieces of paper that we don't need. Um, and it's really then also going to be shifting the responsibility of responding to these immediate concerns um, on the IT side to Shelter Buddy to actually manage that moving forward. Um, so we're hoping that if, if we can get this all aligned and together, which very honestly, it, it's starting to really move in a positive direction. It was a little bumpy at the beginning, and a lot of it's just the learning curve of putting together something like this where it's a software pro, uh, program, but also you're dealing, it's almost like a case management system, a healthcare record together. It's, you know, shelter operations. It's, you know, a cleaning schedules, wa dog walking schedules, all of these things that you don't think about when you're going for a software program um, early on. So we appreciate the dedication um, of our procurements office as well as our IT department for making sure that we're getting a great product. Um, at this point, I was a little nervous up front, um, but at this point, the product is really going to suit our needs. Um, and the interfaces, I think, if nothing else, for our, cu for our customers' perspective, it was going to be uh, a, a stronger presence for them to, to comply. So I want to at least give you that. Um, welcome to answer any questions as well. Uh, starting to work through the workflow processes of how we have to get through all of these. And so um, Sarah Brooks and Gary Chris Christofferson has been really, really helpful in getting those done. So thank you very much. And I'm going to pass it to Scott. Great. I'm just going to follow up on a couple of key points that I think were made, which was operational efficiency. When you actually look at the time invested to keep the existing homegrown system up and running versus actually going to a software product as we have proposed here today, um, the annual cost is actually pretty straightforward and pretty much reduced below that of what services we could provide internally. Kind of further to that point is the efficiency that the organization gains. One of the key aspects is not only the ease of use for the citizens to go online and out interact with the system, 
but it's for the field operations. When they're in the field, when they're out in the kennels, no longer do you have to run back and forth to a terminal to try to update information. Uh, pretty critical for that operation on that side of the business. Uh, it also integrates in with our existing teller point of sale system, which is what we just converted all the other departments towards. So again, a lot of synergies. Um, and then kind of finally, that, that whole notion in around um, the entire mobile uh, uh, area that actually uh, works for both the citizens as well as the staff uh, internally. Um, what we've seen here is, is when we assess the projects, we're trying to look at the amount of risk we have. Uh, we looked at the data. First off, the data is not sensitive, so it's not like our healthcare really because the information isn't scrubbed. It doesn't have anything there's sensitive. So as far as safeguards go, we can actually kind of lower down our barriers. Uh, with respect to actual data migration, most of the work has already been done by the American County staff and actually mapping the data. So we've already ahead of the game. Uh, I mean, this is pretty unusual for projects of this nature. Uh, and then probably the final point is, again, that notion of once you deploy it, we have to use it. And because this is so intuitive, uh, it's easy, again, for the citizens as well as our staff. So I think right across the board, this is a pretty low risk project for us, a very short cycle project, as a matter of fact, compared to some that are maybe nine plus months long. This will be very short. So, so a couple comments. If you test it on the commissioner then and he could use it, then you know anybody could use it. Absolutely. That is one of our, our benchmarks. Maybe. You are our dog expert. Right. right. The, the dog dummy suit. Um, uh, one of the questions, on a serious note, Tamara, we've been talking about vets' offices uh, and their role in trying to help us get registered. Would this be something that, that they could easily, if... Uh, would it be easier for them? They wouldn't, wouldn't have to take the cash and all that. They could just take the person's credit card or have them do it right there at the uh, veterinarian's office? Is this something we've looked at from a standpoint of extension? So, you know, until we get into the ins and outs of the operations of the software system, uh, some of those details aren't completely known. But okay. as I look at the, the option for access, uh, what we can easily do is have instructions at those veterinarian sites and be able to give the customer, the end user, access. Most, most of us have our cell phones with us all the time. Uh, we have at, they can go right online and make those direct uh, licensing happen. With the, our desire is for that to happen in the field, in the communities, uh, in the community homes, and in vet offices. We will be looking at, because they're a huge partner with us, and we're looking at how we can uh, continue their support in helping us increase our licensing and make the ease to the customer. So I don't have a like concrete how that will work, but that is definitely on the um, on the list of things that we need to address as we implement. So is there a flip phone app? I mean, excuse me. <laughs> Is there a, is is it, can I do it? So there is an application, or there it, yes. it's going to work on a smartphone. So yes. if I'm standing, okay, great, okay. And, and I, I was don't gonna, like where you were going, by the way. And um, I was going to add, the veterinary partners are extraordinarily important. They provide about 27 percent of the um, dog licensing for the county. And so we want to keep those partnerships strong because it's very difficult to reach the people once they leave the veterinary office. Um, and it's, it's very problematic if a person leaves the veterinary office, promptly loses their rabies certificate, and then they can't get their license in time. Um, so we're trying to, to get them, we're gonna do everything possible to make sure the veterinary offices have the resources that they need to be able to quickly respond to a request for a, a veterinary license. The one thing I will say is we have to take a cautious approach with the veterinary offices because some of them are not as technologically savvy and they would prefer not to be. Um, so some of them are like that. Some want to provide the, the service uh, online. So just to kind of put that out there for you guys. I hear you. So I have a question. And you're, Jan, you, know, you were getting at it and Scott, you were, you were showing the flow chart of what has to be done and uh, just talk to me a little bit about when you would do this, how long it takes training. Um, is this going to be a big process, shut down of a system for a while, or just slip right in? 
So the overall, the overall timeline is actually forecasted out six months. We don't think it's going to take that long based on what we've seen. Um, it does include the transition in user training. That was actually part of what we purchased, uh, certainly all the migration of existing data. We will have to run the two systems for a little period of time. Uh, usually you try to get through one cycle, usually like on a month boundary, just to make sure that everything's clear. It will be, of course, painful for the staff because one will be very easy to use, the other one not so much. Uh, but yes, all those benchmarks are in place. Uh, again, because we've done a lot of this pre-work, especially the mapping and how we're going to move the data over, chances are it's only going to be a short couple months to get this up and going. Good. I know you've talked about a long time fully supportive. I just want to know what, what I'll be hearing. <laughs> Pretty low risk. Right. So, Chair Cameron, I would make a motion that we do approve the contract for services with Shelter Buddy in the amount of $103,163 for implementation, support, maintenance of an animal management software system. That can be used on flip phones. Right. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Do you want me to call you on it? It works <laughs> for what I want. <laughs> no. He's not even going to get his fishing license on his flip phone next year. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Commissioners, uh, thank you for your support. Uh, you as well, John. All right. And I see Cambry was here. Thank you for uh, contracts, for the people that are behind the scenes making all this stuff happen. Appreciate your service, too. All right. So next item on uh, for action is under public works, consider approval of a public improvement agreement in the amount of $177,040 with Brown Contracting, Inc. for the North Marion County Transfer Station Concrete Floor Repair. Brian. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, for the record, Brian May, Public Works Environmental Services Division. And as mentioned in the introduction, uh, here today to talk about a, a repair that we're having at our North Marion Transfer Station. Um, our facilities are starting to show some of their age um, and also just the high use and the volume that we've been seeing. North Marion Transfer Station has seen double digit growth over the last two years of over 20%. So again, that's just additional wear and tear that we're seeing out there. This contract is actually in a, a second go around. We originally bid this in March, um, had received two bids and one was in excess of $240,000 of our budget. Um, the other bid uh, did not provide the proper documentation for experience, so it kind of forced us to relook and reevaluate the project. Um, so we re-engineered it, put in a scope that was probably half of what we originally looked at, and part of that was a focus at the high um, impact areas and what we've been working on. So if you go to our transfer station, everybody dumps their material into a roll-off box, a 40-yard box. And those are required to be pulled in, pulled out by our equipment. Um, as part of that concrete floor, there's expansion cracks. And the wear and tear of just the metal wheels impacting those has just wallered them out and created these almost ditches within our transfer station floor. We're starting to see excessive damage to the contractor's boxes where we're tearing wheels off and damaging what they call the dog house where we actually connect to the box. Uh, so that's the intent is to get this repair taken care of to address you know, kind of the customer service aspect of moving material in and out, and then also not to impact our contractor, which is the, the impact there. So we rebid this project. Uh, bids were received the June 12th, uh, Brown Contracting, uh, in the amount of 177,040, and American Restore came in at 245, 638, and 21 cents. Um, the bid was approved, and then we had no protests based on that situation. Um, so as we're looking to move forward, I um, do want to make sure I note that this is probably one of more to come as far as repairs that we'll be doing at this facility amongst our others where we're just seeing the age of them and needing to do some improvement projects. Um, so from a financial impact, uh, we've updated an improvement project proposal that will be set forward with the updated to our 2018-19 budget in a supplemental. Okay. From a customer service standpoint, um, again, anytime we're doing work at a transfer station, we're concerned about impacts and allowing people access. We'll continue to have the access Monday through Saturday as we have throughout. 
Uh, we're going to do a temporary relocate of that area underneath what we call Building 4, which is a covered facility, uh, to make sure that we address stormwater issues or any leachate generation that could happen. So it'll be, I won't say seamless to our customers, but we'll still be able to move forward and, and get the job done. Uh, looking at about an eight-day maximum for this project. Questions? I talked to Brian before the meeting and said I'd have a question, but he's answered them. I, I understand just what you're doing and what you have to do there. So, and then, and pretty familiar with the enterprise. So I would make a motion. Mr. Chair. Oh, go ahead. If, if um, could, the chair recognizes Mr. Right. Latimer. <laughs> Thank you so much. Brian, could you explain to the folks watching on TV the purpose of the transfer station and some of the changes you made in our process of, of moving uh, stuff through the transfer station? You bet, definitely. So our transfer stations are a critical piece of our infrastructure, you know, of our integrated solid waste system. It allows our customers you know, in a geographic location to have a kind of easy access for their disposal and recycling opportunities. Um, the North Marion facility does just that, it kind of services that northern county portion for us. Um, it's, it's critical in nature that uh, we try to do um, and handle the material in the best way, I guess is a way of saying that, that um, as our incinerator fills to capacity or is actually now over capacity, uh, we're looking for new ways to process material to get as much recovery as possible. So just this year uh, for our North Marion transfer station, that material is being directed to the Marion Resource Recovery Facility off Brooks Lake Road, where it is now being processed. We're recovering wood, metal, cardboard, and any other commodities that have some value to, to avoid putting more material into the incinerator. Um, we've been already doing this with the material out of skirts um, and showing a, a good impact. We're seeing recovery rates probably of 20 to 30 percent on that material because you think of that when you clean out your garage or whatever else, what you're really throwing away is stuff that we can usually get through and recover some material from. Um, so the anticipation is um, less impact to the incinerator to make sure that we continue to see what I call the garbage, you know, the curbside collected material going there with the volume we need it to, and then moving that other material where we can actually gain some resources and recovery out of it to a similar facility as the Marine Resource Recovery Facility. Yeah, um, touring the facility, the, the recovery facility there on Brook Lake Road, it was interesting to take that wood, the chipper, and then mm -hmm. uh, I, get, I think it's Ferris, takes yep. it up and they use it to uh, generate electricity okay. at their cogen plant. Mm -hmm. uh, up in the canyon so there's a lot of uh, a lot of good things people don't realize that are coming out of uh, all that work that goes on uh, you also mentioned Brian that, that this is one of many to probably come you know and, and I think I said this at the beginning of the meeting it was out at skirts the, the transfer station here out of out of off of highway 22 yesterday and do we have uh, an extension or widening of that road on a list so that people could bypass the line that's going into the the actual dump area to get into the recycle area we are working with republic services to try to improve the access to that facility um, i think a lot of us have experienced delivering material on a saturday or sunday and those right. are our peak times we have had wait times in line of excess of an hour Right. So we're trying to set up the entrance to get a third lane either to a direct recycle or something that allows some additional benefit for our customers. And um, we're staffed in a manner that all three scale houses are full, definitely during our peaks, to try to help with traffic. Um, we're even looking at some of the materials that are currently being delivered to skirts so that we may deliver to one of our other facilities that doesn't have the capacity issue to just try to alleviate that burden. Uh, but those are some pretty big switches, uh, but we're, we're evaluating those right now. Yeah, I was just thinking a recycle lane only would, would yep. really help some efficiencies out there. Definitely. Um, and then in addition to having the household hazardous waste facility just adds a whole other movement of traffic and access egress on the site. It's a it's a really small site with a lot of material being put in and taken out of it. 
I did see traffic queuing just, I don't know what day it was, clear back onto Highway 22, and of course that's not a happy situation ever. No, no, we're, we're seeing that impact even stretching to the weekdays where we're seeing those volumes continue to be high. Yeah, I sat out there, what time we open? Eight, right? Yes. Eight. Yeah, I, I think it was a Saturday morning. I got there at 730 and I was the third guy in line. I sat there for 20 minutes because I didn't want to uh, get stuck in a long line. But yeah, yeah. Part, of, part of our education outreach is to push people to our North Marion facility. It is not yet at capacity, so we do have room there. If people are up for a little more of a, a little longer drive out to the country, uh, we do have access there. Why don't you explain to folks where the North Marion facility is while you have that opportunity? So if anybody heads up towards Woodburn, towards the outlet malls, or it continues up I-5 uh, in the way station, you'll see kind of the hills on the, the west side of the interstate. Frankie Mountain. And that's our North Marion transfer station. Uh, it's, it's definitely at the north end of the county. What exit do they get off of? Do you know? Uh, I take the Woodburn exit. Yeah. Yep. Cosby Road. Okay. Can you get off at Crosby Road? I don't know, actually. Um, I think there's a, a another way around. You'd have to to hit Crosby to then get into the site. Yeah. So Woodburn X is the best. Boone's Ferry or yeah, yeah, the frontage yep. road. All kinds of neat things up there that you can visit while you're at that transfer station. You can see the ash piles. You can see the leche or leche or whatever we kind leche, of yeah, leche, yeah, all kinds of things. Okay. You ready? Well, it seems like you'd rather talk, but I'm ready to make a motion. <laughs> so, Chair Cameron, I'd move. Uh. We, <laughs> we do approve a public improvement agreement amount of $177,040 for Brown Contracting Incorporated for the Marion County Transfer Station Concrete Floor Repair. Now, does that include the other one with America Restore, Brian, or? No. That'll just be Brown. So what happens with the other one? Uh, Brown was just the second bidder, so they were oh, the higher bidder of the two. Yep. I get you. All right. All right. I'll nice. second the motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And Brian, thank you for your leadership uh, in this area. I know it's been a challenge and it will continue to be a challenge, but uh, the creativity you're bringing and the leadership you're bringing is really, really appreciated. So yep. thank Appreciate you. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. That concludes, I think, our action items today. Um, and I will read the calendar for upcoming events. Uh, to, let's see, tomorrow, uh, the, on the 9th at 9.30, we have our... Um, no, that's not 9.30. It should be 7.30. That's what it's on my calendar. It says 9.30. Uh, we just check the website and make sure it's 7.30. Should be 7.30 tomorrow, um, Kaiser Marion County meeting at Sherry's Restaurant at 4998 River Road North in Kaiser. Uh, tomorrow at 9.30, 9th, Board of Commissioners Chief Administrative Officer meeting executive session if needed pursuant to ORS 192.6602ABDFHI here in the um, Silverton Conference Room on the fifth floor. Also tomorrow, Thursday the 9th, uh, from at 3 o'clock, we're going to dedicate the juvenile, the new juvenile courtroom and ribbon cutting at the Marion County Juvenile Court at 2970 Center Street, Northeast Salem. Monday the 13th at 8 a.m., Association of Oregon County's Board Retreat, location the resort at the Mountain, and that's up at 68010. East Fairway Avenue in Welch's. Tuesday on the 14th, 7.30 a.m., State and Marion County meeting. Uh, location is at the Covered Bridge Cafe, 510 North 3rd Avenue in Staten. Also on Tuesday the 14th, 9 a.m., here, calendar review in the Silverton Conference Room on the fifth floor. Also Tuesday, the 14th, 9.30, work session on open access at Courthouse Athletic Club, Silverton Conference Room here on the fifth floor. Uh, Tuesday the 14th at 4 p.m., Marion County Public Safety Coordinating Council, and we're going to be touring the Marion County Jail and the new um, operations facility out 
at 4000 Almsville Highway. On Wednesday the 15th, we're back here for our board session at 9 a.m. On Wednesday the 15th, we're at 1230 uh, for job council meeting in the Willamette Workforce Partnership Boardroom at 626 High Street in Salem, Oregon. Speaking of that work session, uh, I, at my workout this morning, um, the uh, owner of the courthouse said that they're going to spend He's he's got five thousand dollars to remove hedges over there because there's a homeless camp that the that the sheriff keeps helping him with, but the people keep coming back. So interesting to hear what that what that's all about when we have that work session. Um, what else is interesting, Commissioner? Well, you went to four uh, night out events yet. You said yesterday. Yeah. I was planning on going to Sublimity, but frankly, when I got done with state, and I didn't feel like being happy, so. <laughs> Just went home, but anything interesting? Uh, yeah, I I, I, I want to say I was telling uh, John this this morning. Um, I went to Wood Park Terrace. Remember we toured sure. that during the remodel a couple years ago. Uh, the place looked great. Um, the uh, uh, Candace had organized, and she had all her staff there. Mm. They were all in their um, black T-shirts with Marion County Housing Authority on them. Uh, people were having fun. The kids, they had face painting. They had somebody from the library there. Uh, they had these two guys on the, the barbecue, this big, huge grill that were just flaming up, sweating, right? You know, I could relate because I did that for my grandson. It was really, really well done. Yeah. And, uh, and Candace, uh, I was very complimentary to her. It was great to see that. She's, she was wanting to do that at, at some other places, maybe like even out in... Um, I told her you were going to state and, and she says, yeah, maybe we should do some out there. Uh, she's bringing some really great leadership to, to the housing authority. I was really proud of what was happening. Then I went to Chemeketa where we had the, uh, the sheriff had organized one there. It was in the middle of the campus and, and uh, it was just popping, it was happening. And there was just lots of people there. Um, they didn't have the same big barbecue. They had a little barbecue, so I don't know that you and I, I didn't have food there. I had a hot dog in, in, in uh, Wood Park Terrace, but they were kind of behind on the food issue there. But they had lots of, they had our CERT teams, emergency management teams, the sheriff was there, um, a neighborhood association. Then I went down to um, the Four Corners one, which is in the park that before I got here, I guess you would. Santana. Santana Park. Uh, the park looked really good. Um, met some people that run the park. They're struggling with finances. Uh, talked about that, you know, because they want to improve the basketball courts. Uh, again, we had our CERT teams there. Um, sheriff's department was there. Um, they had food vendors there. It was really, really well done. Uh, and then I went down to Viewcrest, the, the one that they always ask me to come every year. And I got there just after the sheriff left, and there was about eight, ten people there um, at the end and they always want me to give a speech and by that time I go I know I'm not I, I just you tell them? answer any questions you want we just talked about stuff so um, yeah it was you good and I'm to... thankful I'm thankful you went to that yeah that meeting I'm taking back to Candace and I'm really happy with the job she's doing too and then getting out at, at functions like that to make yourself available to, to clients that wouldn't have that opportunity show some involvement and caring uh, she's doing a great job yeah, it was really. I mean, you would you would have loved the food. They had I know burgers and dogs, and then inside, and they were smart. They kept it inside where it was cool and shady, in the little um, what is that called? The little center there, right, where they they can meet. And uh, they had they had chopped onions, jalapenos. I put this on my hot dog. Jalapenos. They had pepper jack and cheddar cheese mm -hmm. on my hot dog and mustard and. They had bottled water. It was nice and cold. Um, Mr. Chair. Chair recognizes Mr. Latimer. Thank you for that recognition. Um, I think we are supremely lucky to have Candace. I mean, not only is she well organized, but she's thoughtful. And uh, what she is doing for housing in Marion County is phenomenal, something we haven't seen in years. And I really appreciate the fact that we've got Candace. 
running our housing authority. She's so good. I was signing 818. 18. That's 88. Eight. So, uh, uh, John, I, I recognize, yeah, I know what month it is. It's just I got the wrong date. Uh, I, I, I recognized your wrist this morning. Yeah, uh, you know, we had our department head meeting the other day and passed out the hands and words are not for hurting. And um, It's easier for me to wear it than to do it? it? Because I don't wear long sleeve shirts. Oh, I thought you were going to say it's easier for you to wear it than be nice to people. Right. No, I will not do that. <laughs> You better close this up. All right. <laughs> There's a degradation happening. All right. So um, what else? Anything else happened this week that, that we need to talk about? Okay. Well, there's a lot that happened, but we'll go, we'll go ahead and adjourn. We are adjourned. <laughs>